Uh, my name is Alan Lee. I'm a book illustrator and sometime film designer. My name's Sarah and I'm a photographer from Chagford. I'm Lucy Dickens and I would call myself an artist but I'm mainly a painter and printmaker. My name's Martin Brady. Uh, my profession is leather worker. I am Jason of England and my profession is a jeweller but more specialising in mythic gold work. I started photography, I probably got into it properly when I was at uni. I went to art college, I studied graphic design from 1966 to 69. did an education and art degree and part of the art degree was um, a course on photography with darkroom techniques which I loved. Um, I had my kids really young so I went back into, I did my first art degree when um, my oldest son, who's 22 now, was a baby. I retired from the music business in 2006 and went off around the world on a yacht and came back and all the rest of it. Coming up to 18 years I've been making jewellery. I've been a professional guitar player for 40 years, but I needed a, what I call a manual skill. I thought it would be really nice to have a manual skill. So I decided to go back and I always loved leather and mucking around with leather, as it were. Um, and decided to go back and retrain as a leather worker. And then pretty soon after finishing college, I, I left and um, started taking my work around to various publishers. And I was very lucky in that I managed to get some book cover work to do. I'm not a fan of formal education, but I met some silversmiths uh, who were selling their own work. And it wasn't my kind of thing what they were doing but I thought I'll be able to do that so I asked them if I could pay them and do an apprentice apprenticeship with them which I did. So I retrained as a leather worker spent a lot of time and money invested in that and became reasonable reasonably good and then very good. Once I'd done the apprenticeship which was only literally about a month but it was all day every day for a month even into the evening and they were quite strict hard taskmasters and pushed me quite a lot and by the end of the month um, I'd learned pretty much everything I needed to know about the business I went off and applied it to my own style. And preferred mediums are watercolour and pencil and charcoal very much traditional mediums but I, I do work in uh, Photoshop as well. The work that I do has sort of evolved um, I've always done a lot of portrait work um, and I think because I started off in the darkroom um, black and white is still my first love. I use sterling silver and a lot of nine carat gold. I like working in gold more than silver, though obviously not everyone can afford gold. <laughs> I use very, very limited palette. Some could say dull. <laughs> it's very plain. Um, and then I'll do a little bit of hand colouring and maybe charcoal. It's quite um, quite neutral. If you related it to woods, it would be gold, especially nine carat, is like oak, and silver is like pine. So the the feel of the metal is different. It's harder to work with, but I feel the end result is. It can be amazing. It's not a fixed schedule as such, other than the nine to five bit. Um, but as far as what I work on, it can vary immensely during from one day to the next. I definitely do it as the mood takes me. I have no schedule whatsoever. Ruth would tell you it's very chaotic. But I tend to be working two o'clock in the morning. You know, any time, literally any time, I I could be working it doesn't matter it kind of never stops it's 24 7 Sundays doesn't matter um, it kind of depends on the weather to a certain extent if I've got a deadline then I'm painting to that so every two years I do an open studio and that means I'm spending I'm probably spending six months before that as a minimum preparing for that regarding when I work they might have to wait six weeks or they might get it the next day because there's a thing called ond which is the it's kind of like what the Chinese would call chi it's the a person's power their flow and if the on if I feel the ond is strong for this person 
I'll make that piece of jewellery. It's quite hard to stay indoors all, all day long, uh, so I tend to kind of wait until <clears throat> do most of my work kind of in the evening or you know when the when it's a little bit less interesting outside. So if it, if the weather's rainy, then I get a lot of work done. <laughs> emailing me and saying have you done it yet I say no because the time's not right and then I make it and that could be after dinner in the evening I might just suddenly think I've got to make that thing now and I make it and I start and I go right through to the finish until it's done and then, it, and then they get it and that way it kind of has all the power that's required in it and that's how I work um, but it's very much a deadline that actually kind of gets me you know, kind of constructs my, my daily life, so it depends what, what I have to do. Um, I've worked on a couple of a couple of films before getting involved with The Lord of the Rings. Um, a film called Legend by Ridley Scott. A comedy a fantasy adventure called Eric the Viking, which was made by Terry Jones of uh, Monty Python. February is quite a quiet month for me in the in the <clears throat> in my year and I decided a couple of years ago to start um, a personal project uh, every February. So last year I uh, decided that I would take um, and, and publish on my Facebook page uh, a photo a day of my own children. Uh, so I've got five children and um, a bit like the, the cobbler's children are always poorly shod, I rarely take pictures of my own kids. Um, they hate the camera, they hate me taking pictures of them so I thought it'd be quite a good challenge. Um, so every day in February, I took a photograph of either one of them or a group of them or um, you know, a couple of them at a time and published it on my uh, Facebook photography page. Um, I then had that made into a, a book which um, won a competition for um, a photo book of the month. Uh, and then that went into the Photo Book of the Year competition, uh, which I also won, which I was really, really pleased about. So my real involvement, where I really began to learn a lot about um, the whole filmmaking process, was with The Lord of the Rings. I suppose the main award was the, the Oscar for Art Direction on The Lord of the Rings, um, Return of the King, which I got in 2004. Pretty, pretty amazing. I mean, the whole experience of going to the Oscars is quite, um, quite kind of thrilling. Yeah, I'm being given an award by uh, Angelina Jolie you know, on stage in front of all these people that whose faces are so familiar from every film you've ever, <laughs> you know, ever watched. Uh, and um, yeah, so that was a great, great. Honor. We moved to Chagford um, almost seven years ago now um, and that time has really flown um, and we moved here from Italy so we were in Italy for three years um, and found Chagford quite by chance. I've lived in Chagford for 40 years and um, I discovered it, I came down with my partner for a weekend and um, just discovered this wonderful place that um, seemed to have everything I'd ever want to draw for a lifetime or more. And um, so we actually made the decision that weekend to come down and live in Chagford. I would probably consider myself a landscape artist, although my landscapes are very, as you can see, having seen them now, um, they're very, they're semi-abstract. They're not very literal. Um, and I think this, this area, obviously the landscape, but particularly the kind of people that live here, the sort of thing that makes people tick is, um, is sympathetic to working. Well, I think Chagford's a very inspirational place to live, certainly for me and I think for most of the other people who've, um, who've moved here. You can go off in any direction, just walk off and you've come to these amazing walks, amazing footpaths that lead you through um, woods and by rivers. And Travelled around the world for about 15 years um, and I just felt I needed to come back to England. I came back to Brighton. I was only there for a few months because the, as far as I was concerned the land was empty. It had no essence and Dartmoor just 
It was just there in the back of my mind the whole time. Well, I'm very much inspired by the area in which I live. There's several answers to that, several elements to the answer. One is that I think this part of the world, in other words, the southwest of England, um, has got a slower pace of life to some degree, which tends to attract people who are more creative, and therefore you get a lot of makers, a lot of painters, a lot of, you know, people who are much more creative and make things down this part of the world than perhaps in other parts. Um, and secondly, I think Chagford itself is really attractive because it has that element to it. It's got a beauty about it being in the, you know, in Dartmoor in the National Park. So it has a natural beauty, but also I think there's quite a, um, a community spirit in Chagford as well. Just about everybody knows everybody. There is, there is something quite, uh, quite special about it. Um, and it's also in inspiring to live amongst kind of a creative group of, of other people as well. You know, you kind of compare notes and um, and talk about what you're doing. And uh, so it's a kind of certain amount of kind of a mutual support network as well, which is which is great.